I wanna mock with you all night. Mock Draft Friday is go! What is up, Bengals fam? It's your boy Mike coming back at you with another Who Daily. I don't have any April Fool's jokes for you because I'm not a 12 year old boy. Thank you! So, I'm gonna get into my mock draft. It's gonna be fun this week. There, it is a little bit goofy because uh, I'm gonna use the. I am gonna use the PFF mock draft simulator, but. In honor, I guess, of April Fool's Day, I'm not going to do any jokes, but I am going to make it uh, a little bit goofy on the randomizer what, or on the uh, on the simulator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn play with the play with the settings a little bit. I'm going to turn the ram randomness way up. Now, I tried this a few times before I re recorded this video. If you turn the randomness all the way up, guys like Kyle Hamilton fall to the Bengals at 31, which ain't going to happen. So in order to make it a little more realistic, at least, uh, I turned it down just a bit. And then I also turned it so that um, caring for positional values turned way down. We're going to use the public board more than the PFF board. And we're going to have teams drafting for need a little more often than not. So let's jump in and see what the Bengals would have here um, starting at 31 with these settings. Let's see what they got, man. Uh, every time I do this, it's a little different. So, yeah, look. Yeah, the, look at these defensive players sitting here. You've still got, like, the number one quarterback sitting on the board in Malik Willis. You've got Lewis Cena. Actually, those top – look at this. So, N'Kobe Dean, if the, the Bengals don't have a need at linebacker, but if N'Kobe Dean's sitting there, how do you pass on him? Well, I guess you pass on him if David Ajabo is sitting there because they don't have a need at edge. But repeat after me. What am I going to say? You can never have – too many pass rushers so they made the, i mean sitting here i even i like kair elam like not a lot but a bit like enough uh jalen petrie is more of a safety to me in the league uh if this were the case here I, if i'm the bengals though i really i gotta go i gotta go david ajabo just because he's too good man he he's so his upside is he may be the second or third best pass rusher in in this draft right and if he's sitting there at, th at 31 you've got to take him um but yeah it's uh Coming into the second round here, the Bengals kind of uh, so they they got their edge. They still have a need at corner, right? So uh, even in this randomized draft, their corners aren't slipping. You know, uh, maybe we should have taken maybe we should have taken Kyrie Elam in the first round because corners aren't going to slip in this draft. However, you know, sitting here looking, these are some really really good players here. I would even say Jalen Tolbert. Would be a, an interesting pick, Justin Ross. If you're looking at wide receiver, I do think they'll draft a wide receiver. I don't think it'll be this early though. The second round, I think they're still looking at uh, at defense, specifically secondary. But like I said, not a lot of secondary guys. I do like Kirby Joseph, but he's a third round projected type of dude, and he might be there in the third round when we pick. So I'm not sure I want to reach for him. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a potential. Uh, a potential tackle of the future for the Bengals, 6'7", 319. You can see his grades here. Abraham Lucas, 91 overall pass block grade. It's pretty dang good. He's good at win one-on-one -on -one pass blocking situations. That's what the Bengals really need. Let's get him. I would take Kingsley and Igbari there, but we just got we just got uh, a better pass rusher in the first round than him, so why take him? Uh, I'm not trading back also, if you, can, if you didn't notice, because um, uh, I probably would have uh, in the first round had... Had we been doing it, uh, but take a look here, the Bengals. Uh, I'm not drafting any kind of need really for the Bengals, but if you take a look at kind of the top of the board here of who's available, uh, I look. I really like Brian Cook as well. This might be a good pick here in the third round for the Bengals, but uh, especially because they're probably they're probably going to draft at least one safety. Um, they've got we've got an edge, we have got a tackle. I like Perry and Winfrey. This could be their three tech that they really need. Um, he's kind of a goofy looking dude, isn't he? I don't, shouldn't talk about people. I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm, you know, the greatest looking guy, but the, the, Perry on Winfrey, I'm always skeptical of, of Oklahoma players. And it's not just cause I'm a West Virginia fan. They just, some, for some reason, especially their defensive players don't translate super well to the league a, a lot. Um, but this guy's got all Perry and Winfrey's got all of the size, uh, all the size re requirements that you want. Six four, almost you know two two ninety or so. Good three tech size. 
his, his main skill is pass rush, which is what you want your three tech to be in this defense. So let's go ahead and get him in the third round. Fourth round is now I'd really like to be able to take a defensive back here. But again, we just keep seeing like these dudes that are just kind of, they would be a little bit of a reach if, uh, you know, if we're taking them. Um, and I, you know, the Bengals are going <laughs> to, the Bengals are going to address defensive back, their defensive backfield in free agency as well. It's not just going to be like up to the draft to take care of this. Uh, Zion McCullum, though, st sitting here is pretty interesting. If you guys, uh, it's been a while since I've taken him in one of my mock drafts, but if you guys don't know about him, 6'4", 195. I think he's actually about 6'2". I think this is, uh, I think he, he he's more around 6'2 and a half uh, from what I remember from his, uh, from, from his combine numbers. Just he's got pretty good numbers, right? He's got pretty good PFF grades. You know, the competition level is is a concern, but man, he tested his RAS score is a ten out of ten. A ten. He was the highest testing cornerback. Uh, he ran super fast. Uh, I think this might be the move. Zion McCollum in the fourth round. Uh, really, honestly, straight up go into camp, compete with Eli Apple for that other outside corner spot. If he doesn't win it, no big deal. He's a depth piece. Um, and he will definitely see the field anyway. Uh, you know what, Zach Tom, this is way too... If Zach Tom is here in the fifth round, like I, I, I could show you guys some other options here, but if Zach Tom is in the fifth round, this might be the best... Zach Tom might be the best uh, interior... Like he, okay, first of all, he's going to play... He's more than likely going to play guard in the league at 6'5", 295. Uh, but he is a pass-blocking specialist at... See, he played all his snaps at left tackle this past year, and doing so, blocking the other team's best or second best pass rusher, uh, put up a 92.1 in a big conference uh, pass blocking grade. This is a guy who can come in right now and compete with whoever at left guard. Like he might slot in and be the starting left guard if the, if they pick him. And at fifth round, that's some value right there. That's good, good stuff. Oh, you know what? It's the board fell for me to take. Uh, a hometown guy, I say hometown not because Miami of Ohio is Cincinnati, Ohio, but because I was born in Oxford where Miami is. So to me, this is a hometown guy. We're getting a lot of like these six, these really tall defensive backs, which I actually kind of love. Let's go ahead and take Sterling Weatherford uh, to come in and be the third safety adept piece and maybe future starter at the safety spot for the Bengals. Uh, going into the seventh round, guys, I am rolling through this pretty quickly, not just because uh, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a joke mock draft but more also it's friday and i want to get done with this thing <laughs> i know you guys can feel me on that um taking a look in the seventh round though uh this is just bpa straight up i do think actually right here would be a good place to take a wide receiver josh johnson uh out of tulsa not a bad looking option at slot you know for like a slot slash fourth wide receiver 511 179 not like an he's not like an outside guy um, same thing here. Kevin Austin, I think, might be the move, to be honest with you. Um, I looked up Kevin Austin's uh, athletic testing, uh, and I, I, I think I remember it being really, really good. Let's go ahead and get Kevin Austin as a fourth wide receiver option, come into camp and compete for that fourth spot with uh, Morgan Stanley. Uh, let's see here. Now, usually I take, like, Matt Areza here. Just because, just to, really, it's just to make uh, Jake Lisko mad because uh, he he just thinks it's dumb to draft kickers, and you know I don't blame him. But uh, you guys have seen enough of these that if Logan Bruss is here in the seventh round, six foot five, three hundred and sixteen pounds, and you know uh, played his best football in his last year of college, really solid PFF numbers, played against good competition here. You can see against the real the studs along the defensive line that Michigan has and Penn State, he didn't play as well. Minnesota has a really good defensive line as well, but by and large, really solid dude who could come in and be a depth piece along the offensive line. Let's get Logan Bruss out of Wisconsin, and if you take a look at the draft here, you'll notice the grades are a lot better when you make it more random. Uh, more of these guys' value slides down. I actually think it's a little more realistic because the actual NFL draft is pretty damn random. Like, if you watch it every year like I do, it's always like, who the hell are these guys that are getting picked in the second and third round? I've never even heard of them. And I do mock drafts all the time. I do. I research draft classes all the time, and I, there's still guys that fall through the cracks for me. But here you go, man. David Ajabo, day, day one, you know, just dangerous piece to play at either at outside linebacker or at off the edge uh, to rush. Abraham Lucas could come in and uh, immediately 
uh, compete pro- compete for basically either left or right tackle. They don't need a guy there. It's not like they need a starter, but for him to come in, he could come in and learn behind Jonah Williams and L.L. Uh, Collins. Uh, really good. Perry on Winfrey, a good depth piece, especially if they sign back Larry Ogunjobi because he can learn a lot from Larry Ogunjobi's game. Um, Zion McCollum, uh, athletic freak out, uh, of a cornerback out of Sam Houston. Zach Tom, honestly, could come in and win the left guard spot. He's he's really good. He's, he's that good. Um, Sterling Weatherford more than likely would be that third safety, um, taking Ricardo Allen's spot uh, after they lost him. And then you got your fourth wide receiver option here. He's going to come in and compete with like uh, uh, Morgan Stanley and um, – uh, whoever else they may, they're probably going to sign a wide receiver or two as well. And Logan Bruss, a death tackle as well. Um, three offensive linemen, uh, one defensive back, or two defensive backs, I'm sorry, uh, a wide receiver, and uh, a couple of defensive line options. That's pretty much what you're looking at. These might not be the players, but I think this is pretty close to what the Bengals may do in the draft. Till next time, I've been Mike. This has been Who Daily. See ya.